<laughs> Welcome to episode 34 of Monday Mingle. We're here to talk about mental health and everything else. How are you? I'm your host, Sabby Lou Sounds, and with me is my lovely sister friend, Rosemary Teal. Hello. <laughs> hey, Gels. Welcome. <laughs> How are you? <laughs> so um, we have a topic today. Um, we, like, on Rosemary's podcast, she was talking about self-worth with her hubby. And I, like, as I was listening, I was all like, oh, I so want to talk about this. Uh, so I was like, do you want to do a follow-up? <laughs> She was like, yes. yes. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, yeah. Um, I don't know if you want to say anything else to introduce or I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Hi, I'm Rosemary. <laughs> this is my sister friend, Sabby. I'm very happy to be here again. <laughs> and I love the Monday Mingle podcast. Everybody come listen. Oh, <laughs> this is so sweet. <laughs> And oh, I forgot to put all the links in because I'm I'm dumb and I haven't slept for years. Um, <laughs> let me find. Oh God. Um, like hold on. Let me go to Twitch and find links because I gotta get the links for the Unbound podcast. Wait, no. Let me just go to TealFishStudio.com. Um. Wait. Oh, it's well. Google is telling me to go to Twitch, so I'm going to go to Twitch and grab one of those links and then <laughs> fix my Nightbot. <laughs> oh, I'm so professional. <laughs> this is totally fine. It's fine. It's, it's totally fine. fine. Everything's burning around us, but it's fine. <laughs> like, okay, let me go to About Me and then, okay, the podcast, Teal Fish Studio. YouTube, Twitter, her Twitch. Okay. I'm like, I've got all the things. <laughs> all these links I should have set up first. <laughs> all the things. Oh no, it logged me out of uh, stupid Nightbot. So that's going to take a while. It's thinking. It's thinking. I'm sorry, you guys. <laughs> Uh, last time, last week, I can't believe I had a three-day weekend last week. It feels like five months ago. Like, goodness gracious. <laughs> it's never long enough. It's never long enough. Uh, hold on. Let's see. Loving our guests. Check them out here. And here. Hold on. I'm like, how am I going to do this? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, they have um the Unbounded Artistry podcast. You can find it on oh god, I'm ugh, brain fogging. YouTube. <laughs> Spotify. Where else? Um where else is it? Mm. Tell me. <laughs> what is it? Apple? I don't know. Brandon does this this part. I don't know. Anywhere podcasts are found. Oh, okay. Okay. You can so... find it. <laughs> Wherever you usually <laughs> listen to your podcast, you can find it there. Yes. <laughs> Stitcher, I guess, is another one. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. That's where the, the, the link leads me to. So, like, and, and, oh, my God, what is going on? What? Oh, you're hosting me. <laughs> And I heard my voice and I was like, what the hell? <laughs> that scared me. Hello. I'm so dumb. Uh, <laughs> um, here's the website. Let me grab the YouTube. But um, Rosemary Taylor is also a very talented musician. She has beautiful, soulful songs that are amazing. They will rock your world, let me tell you. <laughs> I listen to them at work now sometimes. I'm like, I just need to... I made a playlist. I'm such a geek. I made a playlist of all my friends from um, Twitch that have music on SoundCloud. And I'm like, 
listening to it on repeat and I'm like, yes, they're going to get all the listens. (laughs) 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 I'm like, I don't know. It makes me happy. (laughs) That's so sweet of you. (laughs) It's like before I couldn't do that sort of thing because like at my old job, I couldn't hear it anyway. So it'd be like, well, Ugh. So, like, I'm loving this job because I can do all this, like, promoing of my friends and stuff, and it makes me feel better about myself. <laughs> hey, makes it fit. How are you? <laughs> oh, life. <laughs> Let me go ahead and give him a shout out. Makes it fit. Oh, my mod won't be here today. She she had to sleep today. So, um, so yeah. So that's going on but um yeah like I forget what it was that you mentioned on the podcast that I was like oh let me go find self-worth because I think on your podcast you guys worded it differently and I can't remember right now um I should have the like, I should have the link somewhere I just had it <laughs> What is wrong? <laughs> Sorry, I'm being awkward. Um, You're not awkward. <laughs> You're totally fine. Like, where, where is it? Where is it? Videos. Wait, this isn't the the podcast. <laughs> what is wrong with me? <laughs> Let me just. I, I, this is what happens when you don't sleep. Like, it's just... <laughs> I, I totally feel you. I'm just like, what is this, it I'm trying to The train to of share? thought that you've got going on right now makes complete sense to me because I also have never slept, slept in my life. <laughs> and it's like, what am I saying? What am I doing? Um, I'm like, I know you guys have the actual podcast on its own channel now, and... I can't find it. <laughs> it's the unbounded uh, unbounded artistry. That's I think there's I mean. a link to it on the bottom of the tealfish page. Okay, let me just go to tealfish.com. <laughs> Wait, let me use my my um Oh look, it just popped in. Let me click that link. Oh wait, that's that's the Twitter. What is wrong? <laughs> Hold on, which one of these is it? The second one. There we go. There we go. Okay. I'm just looking for the title so I can remember. I'm trying to jog my, my foggy brain memory. And I'm like, what was it? What a lot. Um, let's see. Shop about contact. Wait, you said it's on the bottom. Oh, there it is. Wait, is it? Wait, here. Oh, for- <laughs> Hang out loud. What's wrong with me? I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Don't be sorry. You're oh. totally fine. It had the same title. Why did I think it had a different title? What's wrong with me? I don't know. <laughs> I was like, did we call it something else? I don't know. I don't know. I guess you called it the same thing. I think it was, um, I think you guys mentioned a different, or no. Oh, it was when I was listening. I was like, oh, that's like, most people think it's self-esteem, but it's actually self, like self-worth and self-esteem are two different things. Um, Oh, okay. Yeah. And when I was listening, I was like, oh yeah, like there's like a difference because now I remember I'm reading the the website and I remember because like you guys were were mentioning how... um, it was something like Brandon was saying like different things he does or like um like what he does is what gives him his sense of self-worth and and both of you or one of you were like can you get your self-worth like internally um versus externally and that's when yeah. I was like oh my god let me look into this and um and so like self-esteem is like the external like things we do external factors like success and achievements but sense self-worth is something that comes from like your sense like of within yourself who you are and like your your inherent value 
no matter what you you do or don't do um etc yeah <laughs> so i remember at one point i was like do you have this and he's like oh then i don't have any then <laughs> <I was> like <laughs> me neither <laughs> yeah exactly because <laughs> we can like we can measure ourselves like and i think this is why like um you had mentioned my vlog my last vlog about um stuff where i was like talking about my music and all that um, and I can't even remember what I said in that vlog anymore, even though I edited it the same day. <laughs> but um, it was like uh, how sometimes artists will like look at our music and be like, oh, this defines me, like, you know, how how good it is or how bad it is, like what quality it is or whatever. And um, hmm. like that's not really something that should measure your self-worth because it's like... It's something that we have no matter what we do. Um, so, so yeah, that's that's kind of why I was like, yeah, we should do this and talk about this some more <laughs> and everything. Um, oh, I'm glad you're doing good. Um, hope you're both well. I'm well. I'm well. I'm a little nervous because I'm I feel so dead in my brain right now. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, I'm like, I don't want Rosemary to be like, she's wasting my time. She didn't, she's all like, no, never. <laughs> my brain is all over the place too. Cause I'm like, we're both on a serious deficit of sleep. It's totally fine. This is just how we function. <laughs> this is normal. This is how we get along. This is absolutely normal. We <laughs> this just is why we by. get along. <laughs> exactly. It's like, oh, you haven't slept? Oh, yeah. Yeah. You haven't slept? Yeah. We get it. <laughs> What is sleep? I don't You're know. You're always like my my late night. Like I'm like, oh, I'm like I need somebody to talk to. It's three a.m. Sabby's on. Let me message Sabby. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <it's> so funny. <laughs> uh, yeah, like Gels and I will be like like that too. Just like randomly like talking in the middle of the night. Like oh, oh so this just happened. It's like oh, great. <laughs> <laughs> it's nice to have other people that are awake at the same times that I am right? because when it, usually it's like I'm alone in a vacuum. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Me too. And like for me, especially when like I'm I've had like a bad time, day, month, year, week, whatever. <laughs> it's like when I'm alone, that's like the most like it feels like I don't want to say dangerous because that's not what I'm trying to say, but it's like the most vulnerable for me to like go down a really dark path like mentally and like ruminate or I don't know if that's the right word but like ruminate 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 yeah on like the worst things that I should be thinking <laughs> you know it's like there's nothing else out there to like keep me from it even if I sit there and try to look for you know like positive videos or like teach myself about myself you know like work on myself since i'm it's 3 a.m i can't sleep <laughs> you know like <laughs> it's um even if i try to look for that stuff like my brain will be like yeah but you suck at this because of this and that and i'll be like uh. <laughs> <laughs> so it's nice to have like external feedback that's live and like you know most most of the time sometimes has been there or is going through it at the same time so you're very welcome you're very welcome thank you for being here um <laughs> got lost in the editing it's fine i've been there i've i've i've, I've done that <laughs> it's like uh i mean we got lost in like talking about our pets so we were like yeah. 30 minutes late <laughs> started a little late just a little <laughs> just a little just a little bit <laughs> but um i guess i'll start reading the um the actual website that i'm working off of which is okay. um university of north carolina wilmington um counseling center and what they have to say about self worth and you can stop me whenever you need to or you know whatever <laughs> Um, so it says self-worth is the internal sense of being good enough and worthy of love. 
and belonging from others. Self-worth is often confused with self-esteem, which relies on external factors such, such as successes and achievements to define worth and can often be inconsistent leading to someone struggling with feeling worthy. This is me. Anyway, whereas it is important <laughs> to have a solid understanding of our strengths and areas for growth, we also need to feel good enough even when we make mistakes or things do not work out in our life as we had hoped. How would you describe your self-worth right now? Oh, this is why I wanted to do the questions with you. I think this will be fun. <laughs> what words would you use to describe yourself? Ugh. I suck. <laughs> <laughs> I just I, feel. I, ha- I have about such myself. bad self worth. I mm-hmm. think that's why we were talking about it because mm-hmm. I don't know. Like I don't find self worth internally. Like I think I have to look at the external factors of things that I can offer yeah. to feel like I'm worth anything yeah same and it, it's I weird even, i'm yeah go ahead oh sorry no i was gonna say like i even mentioned um when we were talking about it something that you had said because you said um i think in in chat or something one one of the days you were saying sometimes like the things that you say to yourself are like so mean but you realize the things that you say to yourself you would never say to somebody else Mm -hmm. and it's the same with me like the way that I talk about myself like my self-talk is so negative but I would never say that to anybody else yeah like not even my worst enemy because of the self-worth would I ever do right (laughs) it's like exactly you could have stabbed me in the back and I still wouldn't be like as harsh as I am with myself like yeah (laughs) it's horrible like like even my dad like i i would never say anything about my dad like the way i'd say it about myself and he's the main reason that i don't have (laughs) self-worth right one of many things that's the whole thing yeah how like it's so strange but like yeah yeah it's like um so yeah uh it's like not saying, good words to describe myself. <laughs> right? Right? <laughs> it's like I could I would probably like describe myself with like you know things I do. You know, like, oh well, I'm a musician right. and you know, I have a podcast about mental health because it's important to me. Um but like when I started therapy and uh my therapist started making me say nice things about myself. <laughs> And it was like, oh, at first I was like, I could never come up with this list. Never, ever. And my friend Steve was like, sure you can. You can do it. And I was like, I don't, I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. He's like, just try. And he was like, start with three. So I like listed out three whatever things. And he's like, see, you're, you're awesome. And like, we kept talking and somehow I came out with a list of 15 things. And like, now I can't remember any of them. <laughs> I wrote them all down in like this journal that I started for my specifically for my therapy that I stopped using like within a couple months but um you know it was like stuff that I would probably say about any of my friends you know like oh they're compassionate or um they notice things about about other people you know or they remember whatever um stuff like that um like like my friend Melmo she she remembers random stories that I've told her like months and months ago and I'm like how the hell do you remember that but I would remember stuff like that about my friends you know I'd be like oh yeah I remember this one day they were talking about this and this and da da da, da. <laughs> you know and it's yeah. like I I don't see those qualities in myself at all like easily like it takes a lot a lot of digging and like sitting in like complete silence or you know like it might brush through my head lately um after like a year and a half of therapy but like everything else is like more you know front and the center <laughs> you know like oh yeah. like I'm lazy oh like I I you know I struggle I can't keep my apartment clean oh like 
like I fight with my mom all the time. Oh, like, you know, like all these things that I'm like, I'm I'm just an awful human being. <laughs> yeah, I think the other thing too is like if you struggle with self-worth, like even if you can identify certain things about yourself that you know are good qualities, mm-hmm. you start to second guess them a little bit and then you're like, well, I'm a kind person, but I could be nicer. And sometimes I'm not kind. And then you just like start to like yeah. downplay like that one thing. And then you're just like trying to negate it. <laughs> so it's like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I don't know why we do these things to ourselves, but we are just like, okay, yeah, I write music, but it's not good. <laughs> or I'm kind, but I'm not kind enough. Yeah. Or whatever it is. Like, it's just, it's not to that level. Like, it's not good enough. Yeah. Yeah. No, I totally get what you're saying. Like, even when, like, someone will compliment me and it hits home to something that I actually might, you know, if I sit there and dig, I identify with, like, as this is a good quality I have. <laughs> you know, this is a good sense of me. Like, even if they hit the nail right on the head, like, within seconds, I'm like, but no. <laughs> <laughs> it's always the but yeah You're like yeah but but <laughs> or like if i actually feel good about it you know like proud of it or whatever like yeah i am it's like within seconds i'm like oh that's evil why am i why am i feeling that way this is this is yeah. wrong <laughs> and you feel bad about feeling good about something yeah exactly <laughs> it's so it's so hard and twisted and weird and i'm like Ugh. This is difficult. <laughs> you know, it's like, <laughs> it's so weird. Um, Very confusing in, inside of these brains. <laughs> yes. Yes, indeed. Um, I guess we can't describe ourselves. <laughs> Not in a nice way. Um, the second question. Yeah, it's just, it's hard. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard. <laughs> That's what she said. I'm just kidding. Um <laughs> What value did you place on yourself or aspects of yourself? <laughs> well, <laughs> uh, I I'm guess a we better do have friend. to circle back to the first one, right? Like, I don't yeah. know. How do you answer these without answering the first one? I guess it's trying to like circle back to that. Yeah. Because like the third question is, were your descriptions generally positive, balanced, or negative? Negative. One hundred percent. And then the interesting one for me, I guess, is where did your messages around your worth come from? Ooh. <laughs> well. Dad. <coughs> Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Well. I think you know. Yeah. <laughs> my trauma <laughs> uh yeah basically it's definitely stems from childhood for sure yeah and it it's bad because like the longer it goes unhealed like the worse it gets and more tumultuous and confused it gets um and like i hate it because like i felt like i was progressing so much and then all of a sudden, I guess, I don't, I don't know if it's because of the e- EMDR, but it, it lines up right when I started, you know, I started that and I only had like three or two, two or three sessions. And all of a sudden I had like a really, really bad breakdown. And it was like the first time I self-harmed in a long time. And the first time I was thinking about suicidal ideation in a long time. And I was like, what the... <laughs> what the hell and I haven't been able to get back to the mindset where sometimes I'll remember one of my good qualities throughout the day when I'm interacting with my friends and loved ones and yeah and I'm the just EMDR like stuff is so hard yeah because like yeah. during I was just like oh okay whatever you know like my therapist was like do you want to keep going I'm like yeah sure He's like, are you sure? Yeah, whatever. Yeah, 30 minutes of, you know, just looking back and forth and thinking about things. And, um, you know, she does it where, like, 
She's like, all these negative things, just pack them back in and, you know, put them somewhere mm-hmm. where we can, you know, come back to it later and um, go back <laughs> yep. to your safe place, you know, and everything. And the whole time I'm like, whatever. Nothing. I didn't even really think about that much bad stuff. Whatever. I'm fine. And then a week oh, later, see, I was I having a breakdown. <laughs> it was crazy because be... she she thought <sighs> she thought I would you know react like you did because she she tries to be very gentle with it because she yeah. knows how harsh it can be. And like the first session, I was like, "Yeah, this is great." And like afterwards, like I was all like, "Yeah, I was gung ho about like doing stuff, you know, going getting back on the horse and." You know, recording songs and putting them on my YouTube and oh, look at me, I'm so promoing, I'm so proud of myself. And then after the second one, crash and burn like three days later, and I was like, what the hell? <laughs> Where did that yeah. come from? And like, it brings up so much stuff, and you're yeah. just like, oh no. <laughs> and during, I wasn't even thinking about it, but it was like two or three days later, something triggered me, and it took me back to like a random thought I had during the session. And I was like, oh, and like other things that like are suddenly reminding me of stuff that's always bothered me that I've never been able to talk about. And I'm like, shit, (laughs) you know, and it's just like normal everyday things that I do. And like right now, like even thinking about it, it's like overwhelming as to how many little things like, like re like repeat that little message of like Mm -hmm. i'm worthless or i could be better or you know like you're not good enough yet and like i never i never realized how much i struggled with actually feeling good enough i always thought i just struggled with like um with being seen at all you know um yeah but it's like i thought it was only that i felt like toxic and too much and like if i'm around then you know the world's gonna destroy itself you know i see myself as a nuclear bomb let's just see that (laughs) say that um but then like there's that aspect but then there's also like if i'm doing well it feels like nothing like the things i do well feel like nothing and it's like oh okay (laughs) So it's like not only me existing feels like I'm about to, you know, destroy everyone I love, but also like the things that I think I do well aren't good enough. And I was like, oh, great. Yep. (laughs) It's like, I never realized this. (laughs) Yeah. It just brings up so much stuff. Like I would kind of do the opposite of you is like I would prep myself before I would go into session and I'd be like, I got this. It's totally chill. I know what we're going to talk about today. No big deal. I'm not going to cry. Everything is going to be fine. But as soon as we started, I was like devastated. <laughs> and then it would be the same thing like, okay, we're going to pack this away, put this away until we can work on it again and whatever. And like I would mentally try to do that. Mm-hmm. But as soon as I walked out the door, I would just start crying again because, like, all of that stuff is still there. So I was probably not doing the best job at um, trying to compartmentalize everything and, mm-hmm. like, actually processing things. Because what I realized after the fact, because I'm no longer doing the EMDR because my therapist, who was amazing, had to retire. So... I didn't really get to finish what I started, but I feel like I've definitely made a ton of progress from where Mm -hmm. I was. But what I realized was that I wasn't fully giving into the experience of the EMDR because I was also trying to, like, be good enough for my counselor. Like, I wanted to be like, yeah, I, I processed this. I'm good. Let's move on to the next thing. Like, it was like I was kind of like... (sighs) doing the same thing with her that I did with everybody else in my life. Like, I don't want to be a burden. I'm doing well. I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. Like, am I okay? (laughs) Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. So it it didn't actually help me that much. Like, it helped me a lot, but like, not to the degree it could have if I had fully like trusted in the process and been, yeah, and like been honest about the whole thing. Yeah. And that's, that's the other thing. Cause like, 
we had to have like an emergency session. Um, I want to say it was like the ninth or something. Um, and then like we kept like the one I had scheduled, like the normal one, um, which was Valentine's Day. Um, and like <laughs> this, like the normal, like the emergency session was cause like I had to break down like in the middle of work and I, I got so paralyzed I couldn't even like function. Um, and I was just like, <laughs> I pushed through the day and just like, whatever. Cause thankfully my job, like I can, I can still do my job in the middle of a breakdown, even my old job, amazingly, which was more stressful. But anyway, um, we had an emergency session and then like on the 14th, we had like a normal one. And then like, she was like, okay, just like call me when you're ready to have your next session. And then, um, I was like, yeah. And, uh, like we both agreed that we'd keep in touch and just like, she keeps checking in when she did. And she kept checking in with me. Um, cause she was worried about, you know, the suicidal ideation and all that stuff. Um, which thankfully I hadn't dealt with it after that one, like really bad week. Um, but I was, I was scared to contact her and be like, I need another session. Like part of yeah. it was like money and like that was like the easy excuse, you know, like, well, I can't really afford it. I'm just going to wait till payday. <laughs> Even though she would never let me like keep that from letting me have like the the things I need. Um, right. You know, she she would work with me until I get paid or whatever. Um, but uh, I was just like, no. And it was completely because, like, I felt like she might feel like she's not doing a good job. And I didn't want her to feel that way. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I'm too broken for you to fix me, so I can't let you know that. Because yeah. that's how I felt. Like, yeah. She's like, oh, like, do you think we're, like, because did she do, the, like, I guess they probably do the same thing with the EMDR, but, like, you were at a five, like, where are you now? And I'd be mm -hmm. like, oh, I'm at a one. And I'm like, I'm still at a fucking five, but I'm not going to tell you that because then yeah. it seems like I'm not doing anything. Yeah, like, um, like, I'll probably be, like, at a two or something, and I'll tell her, like, six. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm glad it's she just doesn't like listen to this because she would be like, because... uh, excuse me, stop lying Hello. to me. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> But it's like, I think it's just kind of embedded in your brain sometimes when you come up that way that like, mm -hmm. you have to, it's our way of protecting ourselves. You have to like put on a front to be like, I'm okay. You don't have to take care of me. Like, I yeah. got this. Yeah. Even like, though I'm not we're upset at all. Crumpling. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it's, it's horrible because like when I need the most help is when, like, that's the last time. Like, that would be the last moment that I would, like, reach out to a friend and be like, hey, <laughs> I kind of want to disappear from existing, so can we talk? <laughs> you know, I would never. Yeah. I would never say, it. like, it. the words don't even come into my mind. Like, mm -hmm. I'm just, like, reeling in all these horrible thoughts of, like, you know, quote, how much better the world would be without me or whatever mm -hmm. um, kind of thing. And uh, I'm not thinking, you know, like, Rosemary would miss me. I'm not thinking Gels would miss me. I'm not thinking my bunny needs me. I'm not thinking my mom needs me. I'm thinking, like, I'm destroying everyone. I'm hurting everyone I love. And I... Yeah. You're like, just, like, I, in that catastrophic, like, way of thinking when that yeah. kind of... Stuff yeah happens and it's like for me because like when i growing up i could express like a simple need like oh like these pantyhose are itchy or something and it would turn into a big old fight between dad and mom you know like her defending mm -hmm. me and you know uh dad just trying to put me down um or I guess put me in my place, whatever he thinks he thought my place was. Um, so, like, 
it's not only that I don't think I'm good enough to like be taken care of properly. I also feel like if I express any of those needs or wants or desires, then I'm I'm destroying the things that I care about and they all hurt you know so like even like I I was scared to tell her like I'm really not doing well (laughs) and uh like my brain automatically started thinking like she doesn't care about you anyway so she'll Mm -hmm. you can just like not text her and she'll forget about you and you'll never talk to her again and it's gonna be okay and like yep. I had to like face her and tell her that when she was like, "Hey, we didn't schedule another session. Are you okay?" And I was like, "Uh, <laughs> I was like, oh yeah, uh. I can't remember if we had one, did uh, you know?" <laughs> and then during the session, I had to admit to her, I was like, "I I actually started feeling like, you know, it would be okay if I never, you know, reached out, and then you would just forget about me, <laughs> kind of." And she was like, no, like she, she felt so sad and like it hurt seeing her so sad. And I was just like, I'm not letting her do her job. Yeah. (laughs) And then like my brain was like, yeah, she doesn't really care. It's just because of the money. And I'm like, I know that's not true. (laughs) Freaking no, (laughs) that's not true. But that's what my brain said, you know? Um, Yeah. It was like, oh, uh (laughs) I was like, what? And, uh, yeah, she forced me to have another session tomorrow. Um, like, my last session was Friday. <laughs> she was like, okay, we're going to do Monday. And I was like, I can't on Monday. I don't have time. Oh, okay, Tuesday. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> she was like, you, you, we're keeping the session. We're doing it another week, you know, every single week. And I'm just like, I, I feel like a failure, even though she's trying to help me, you know. And it's like, this is her life goal, to help people like you and I. And I'm not letting her do that because I think it's going to hurt her. It's like, yeah, it's so ridiculous. <laughs> you know? It is ridiculous, <laughs> but that's what happens when you have a broken brain and you don't have the self-worth that you need. Like, I think the other thing, too, is like, because my self-worth is so low, like, I don't feel worthy of anything. So, like, when you were saying, like, when I'm at my lowest, like, you don't reach out. Like, same for me. Like, if I'm at my, like, lowest point and I'm like... I really need something. I need somebody's help right now. I won't I will not reach out because I don't feel like I'm worth spending time on. And like I think I'm also fearful that like if I reach out to somebody that they're going to reject me in some kind of way and it's just going to ha- send me like spiraling even more. Yeah. So I'm like I'm not even going to bother. Like Yeah. I yeah. just build it up in my head like worst case scenario. Yeah, that's the other thing. It's like cuz I you know, I had someone who I thought loved me or whatever um and I would reach out to him whenever I felt that way because I was like oh yeah he like you know claims he wants me in his life until he dies or whatever um so he should know that I'm you know in a really tough spot and I would reach out and like give paragraphs of everything I was suffering through at the moment and then um I would get left on red for like two or three days and I I felt worse than I've ever felt ever and uh, it made yeah. it even harder like because now I'm scared to reach out to, to friends who like sure like I understand that not everyone's available 24-7 um, and they would want to know that I was going through a tough spot but it's like I remember that moment and like I don't want to re-trigger myself um just because my friends are busy um yeah knowing like that my friends now are nothing like this this guy this asshole um (laughs) but i'm like i know my brain would take that and run with it and just hurt me and try to like destroy the things i love um and be like oh yeah they're just like so and so they don't care either you know so it's like, yeah. oh, don't even, don't even, like, it's like, I try to protect myself and be like, don't even let it be a factor where, like, they might accidentally hurt you. Like, because, like, 
yeah, you don't need that exactly <laughs> you know it's like yeah you don't need that your friendship doesn't need that just just leave it be just leave it be <laughs> yeah it's like it's a way for you to like somewhat protect yourself because you don't want to get hurt yeah. in another way or in an additional way so you just don't want to yeah and I don't want to <laughs> I don't want to hurt like my my idea of my friends you know be like oh mm-hmm. <laughs> Like, I, I don't want these lies to infect, like, my current friendships that are, are a lot stronger than my old ones, you know? Um, yeah. So I'm like, I don't I don't want those things anywhere near my friends. Like, stay away. <laughs> yeah. So it's, it's weird um, and sad all at once. And it's, it's hard when I'm, like, struggling. Yeah. I mean, like, I think it's good that we at least know why we struggle with self-worth. Mm-hmm. Because, like... It's it's obvious that it came from our our past and our childhood and our upbringing for both of us. But, like, it's hard, like, when you've been told something over and over and over again and you're, like, fundamentally, like, your development years, then you're conditioned to think that way. And then even when you are in a safe space and you're older and you know better – it's hard to get out of that mindset. You just believe that still. Yeah. Sorry, someone came in. <laughs> My friend Geneva. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> came in. Um, but yeah, it, it is good that we, we know where it came from because like it gives you, like you said, a foundation to work off of and start that healing. Um, yeah. <laughs> oh, you had the volume down. Okay. She was like... Did I miss the stream? I'm like, oh shit, have we been like <laughs> streaming in silence this whole time? <laughs> My brain started Oops. reeling. I was like, uh, it's time for both of us to fight the mics. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, this is the pinnacle of our, our friendship is both of us fighting with our mics at the same time. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I just got out from my got up from my nap. I'm out of it. It's okay, Jane Geneva. Um, Geneva actually just um, did an event this weekend that was to raise money for suicide awareness um, with a like the the organization awesome. is called Save. I forget what it stands for, but it's some suicide something. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but yeah um like i i didn't realize it was something that has touched her life as well um so when i found that out i was like oh, safe a person <laughs> 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 but um i was like yeah but um every time you you like ever try to give her a shout out like it picks up the korean and then like um it doesn't take you to her channel. You have to like write out her name. And so I ended up um, just making a special um, oh, man, for shout her. out for her because <laughs> I'm nice. like, she deserves it. She deserves her own. Um, so she's always joking, saying that like, um, you have to crack the system. And I'm like, oh, I cracked the system. <laughs> You are special. But anyway, Geneva's awesome. So if anyone ever wants to just chill out with some retro video games and a very pleasant, peaceful person, definitely check her out. She's amazing. Um it's a very nice community and I'm 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 glad I'm there. <laughs> I'm very glad I'm there. Um but I don't know if you wanna um keep going with um like the the website we're reading from or maybe you can look at the other one whatever you want to do you you are the host I'm i will go host. wherever you tell me to go <laughs> i will follow you anyway um <laughs> <laughs> so um after those questions that were that felt really intrusive but <laughs> very very good questions um it says low self-worth is having a generally negative overall opinion of oneself, judging or evaluating evaluating oneself critically, and placing a general negative value on oneself as a person. 
People with low self-worth often criticize themselves and abilities, brush off compliments and (laughs) or positive (laughs) qualities, focus on mistakes, what they didn't do or what other people seem to do or have. Ouch. Okay. Sometimes low self-worth is the result of a difficult childhood or difficult childhood experiences where a child is led to believe that they are not good enough. And this narrative sticks with them into adulthood. This is what we were talking about. Yeah, low (laughs) self. This low self worth may manifest in different ways for people. In school or work, they may avoid challenges and achieve less. That was probably me. Um, (laughs) In personal relationships, may become upset or distressed by any criticism or disapproval. Disapproval. They may bend over backwards to please others, be that's extremely <laughs> shy or self-conscious, that's that's definitely me, avoid or withdraw from intimacy, vulnerability, vulnerability or social contact, also me, <laughs> less likely to stand up for themselves from being abused or neglected. Yup. Yup. <laughs> Sadly. Yep. I, I like, it's so bad I don't even realize it's happening sometimes um, for six years or so. Um, anyway. <laughs> that's insane because that's literally what we just talked about. Right? That's like spot on. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Fresh we can off teach compliments. this course. Never. I know, right? I'm be like, this is what not to do. <laughs> If you want to have self-worth, don't follow my lead. (laughs) Do the opposite of what I do. Think of yourself as not me. (laughs) There's like all sorts of handouts and stuff on the website. I don't know if I I plugged it into the the stream. I'll do it again. I think when you first started. There we go. But yeah, just in case, this is the website we're reading off of and in the YouTube channel or yeah, in the YouTube version, I'm like, what am I saying? In the YouTube version, I'll have it linked in the description and I'm doing the pointing thing that most YouTubers do when they point to the bottom of the screen. I always think that's funny Um, because it's like, if you weren't on YouTube, this would make no sense. Yeah, right. (laughs) You're just pointing at your genitals, I guess. (laughs) Anyway, there are many ways you can increase your self-worth. Self-compassion is a wonderful place to start. Okay. Self-compassion is the ability to be kind to yourself and actually say and do kind things towards ourselves the same way we would a good friend versus being critical. We can remember and remind ourselves that everyone makes mistakes and is imperfect. This is what makes us all humans. You have to start by noticing that you are struggling and allow yourself to sit with whatever emotions may arise from situations. I am getting better at that, thankfully. (laughs) The resources below may help in gaining insight on what impacts your self-worth and increasing your self-worth and self-compassion and other methods of accepting acceptance and healing. Ooh, that's exciting. I definitely want to put this elsewhere. Um... I should, there's like handouts and websites, podcasts, videos, I'm like link hours, I'm just kidding, <laughs> books, <laughs> and there's books and stuff, um, which is really cool, I'm going to recommend some to my friend, my friend Melmo does Mental Health Mondays where she reads um, mental health books with her stream, on her stream, and like discusses stuff, it's really cool. Um, nice. Yeah. So that's the end of that that website. It's a very short little thing. I thought it was going to be forever long. <laughs> but um yeah, like self-compassion is something I learned about maybe a year ago or so. Um cuz I I never realized um like that was an easier pill to swallow than like you know, positive self talk i guess or like affirmations i guess Mm -hmm. um where it's like people will be like oh yeah just look in the mirror and be like you're a badass bitch you're a badass bitch (laughs) or whatever you know like my um 
my ex uh, co-worker Megan she used to do that and that helped her you know but I was like I I can't do that I can't, yeah. I can't. <laughs> you know like I can't it, it doesn't feel right it doesn't it didn't hit home but um when I learned about self-compassion um that started hitting home a lot more because I guess I'm a good friend and I'm not mean to my friends <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, okay, let me consider myself um, as a friend. What would I send to my any of my friends that were feeling the way I'm feeling right now? And yeah, that really helped, especially with like my low energy and all the times that I couldn't cook for myself or I couldn't clean or I couldn't look after the bunny correctly. Um, it really was a huge game changer. Um. Because, like, it stopped the weird cycle of, like, oh, I didn't get the dishes cleaned. Uh, I'm a horrible person. Oh, I'm so lazy because I couldn't get the dishes clean. And, oh, well, now I have to eat out because I couldn't get the dishes clean. And now I'm a horrible person because my family is going to die from starvation because I'm wasting all my money on fast food. And then my family is going to die because it's fast food and it's so unhealthy and I'm killing my mother and blah, 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 blah. Like on and on and on. It, it, it stopped it so quick because it was like, oh, I wasn't feeling good enough to do the dishes. That's okay. I'll get them done as soon as I can. We're just going to have to make some accommodations. It's all right. You know, whatever. Like, it's okay. And, like, if, if my mom wasn't able to wash the dishes because she was feeling tired, I wouldn't say all these horrible things to her. I would just be yeah. like, it's okay. You know, we'll, we'll do them later or I can do them for you or whatever. You know, like, it stopped that whole cycle. Like, so fast. Um... It, it, it was so fast it amazed me. I was like, oh, well, that feels better. <laughs> and like when I was too tired or had a migraine and had to spend the whole day in bed, it was like, it's okay. You deserve to rest. You, you're doing the best you can. It's all right. And then the next day, because I actually let myself rest and I didn't work myself to the bone out of guilt or like shame or whatever, I got more stuff done because I let myself rest and I let myself do the things that I needed to like do to to move on and you know move past the like bad chronic pain days or the bad like emotionally exhausted days after a breakdown or whatever um it it was a game changer it was crazy um so yeah I definitely definitely do think that self-compassion is a good stepping stone for like having more self-worth um yeah but i don't know if you have any insight on that or or anything else that I we mean, just talked about <laughs> i mean with the the self-worth thing is still it's a really big struggle for me um mm -hmm. i mean the self-compassion because i don't i don't have compassion for myself like i feel like i just have to keep going and keep working and like if i like complain or if i feel like I can't do something, then I'm just, I'm just very hard on myself. And I think like, it's hard for me to be kind to myself. One of the things that we were working on, I think I mentioned this to you before, but we were doing parts work in therapy. Yeah. And it was basically like kind of splitting yourself up into like your traumatized parts and oh, yeah. Yeah, your yeah. younger self and stuff like that. And then instead of it like like me myself like currently like it would be more like talk to you as a child mm -hmm. and like what 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 were you as a child feeling and like if you were taking care of that child what would you say to that child and like it was kind of that same concept of self compassion but it's kind of separating it a little bit from your current self Mm -hmm. so that you can be, I guess, a little bit more open to it. Yeah. And, like, when I think about, like, me as a child and, like, the stuff that I went through and the things that I had to hear, I feel more compassionate to that little girl version of me and that younger version of me than I do to my current self. 
but I guess the whole goal was if you can heal the younger part of yourself, then it's going to eventually heal your current version. <laughs> yeah. I'm not quite there yet, but I think it's a it's a good technique because it's really difficult for me to get out of my own head and like to give myself a break. Yeah. Like take care of your inner child and stuff. Yeah, definitely. Like Yeah. I I've always thought of the concept, but like I never realized what that that little girl would even need um and why you know like why she basically locked herself away into a closet <laughs> you know because that that's basically what i did with my my inner child was like just sit in this dark dungeon here because if you come out everyone's gonna die so just stay there <laughs> You know, it's like, that's what I did. And I couldn't even picture myself, like, and, like, all my needs and wants and stuff like that. Um, probably until recently, when we started doing EMDR, I started thinking about myself when I was a little, you know, I started saying baby savvy, like, randomly in chats and be like, oh, yeah, baby savvy would be going through this or little savvy. Um like, I, I had no concept of that for the first year and a half of therapy. I was just like, yeah, uh, is she even there? <laughs> like, like was, was that even a thing? <laughs> like, isn't, and isn't that still me? Like, that's how it felt. Um, oh, that's okay. You can lurk away, Jean. It's all right. Enjoy your dinner. Thank you for being here. Even a little bit means a lot. Um, but yeah, like. I think that's why I wrote my song Found um, like a year ago because that's when I started seeing a little bit of that that aspect of um, you know like the dreams and aspirations I used to have for my life um, Yeah, that I'm, I'm still very much working towards but was always ashamed every time I did because like, like every time I put out a music video and I wanted it to do well, or put out a blog or whatever, and I wanted it to do well, I felt, like, super ashamed and childish, and, like, I felt so immature and just ridiculous, and I would beat myself down, like, how dare you be excited about this? This is so dumb. This is so stupid. Like, who cares about this? It's not even good quality, and, like, that's when it would unreal, like, <laughs> into, like, just this long thing of like oh well you don't even sing good oh well you're not even a real musician because like the only instrument you can play is a guitar and you can barely play it and like then all these weird like things that I would never say to any of my friends who play you know music I would never tell like one of my friends well all you play is guitar and you suck at it like I would never say that <laughs> like I would never and like the no matter what circumstance, I would never say that. But with me, it was like, oh, yeah, pfft, yeah, pfft. look at this video. It's so grainy and ugly. Like, no, <laughs> like, you know, like, I would never say that. Um, But it was because I felt so childish and so stupid. Like, I was giving someone a ball of mud and be like, hey, look, it's, it's a masterpiece. <laughs> Enjoy it, you know. Um... Or it felt like I just pooed in the toilet and I was like, hey, look, it's a dinner. You know, like, that's how it felt when I would put out a video. Um, and it was because, like, the little, the little savvy in me, like, every time, like, I tried to be myself um, and shine or whatever, I guess I want to say it, um, it, no one cared. <laughs> And I felt like yeah, it was because it wasn't worth being cared for. And I was like... Or it was like a burden. <laughs> yeah. Or it was like... That's... Yeah, I totally feel what you mean. Because like... I think for me at least, like when I was younger, if I would... I was like... And I still am like such an overachiever because like I feel like I had to be a hundred and... 
10% or like 210% for anything to get recognized. And even then it was like crapped on. Like it was just like, who cares? This isn't good enough. Like it was never a priority mm-hmm. or whatever. And like I would just try so hard and like even like my best efforts were never good enough. So like to me, even like now – Anything that I do, like, I still have, like, that same voice in my head, like, it's not good enough. It sucks. Like, you're you're just not doing good enough. So, like, why are you even trying? It's, like, from, like, therapy and stuff, it's basically, like, you get so conditioned to hearing that that mm-hmm. you start saying it to yourself, like, because that's what's comfortable and that's what you're used to yeah. so like you kind of take on the role of the abuser and you're, you're you become your own abuser yeah yeah it's and just it's, like a really bad cycle yeah it's it's horrible and it's it's like i had to accept those ideas because otherwise i wouldn't have been able to like live with the like the truth that you know, my, my father was a dangerous man, you know. Um, he was unfit to take care of me and unfit to take care of my family. Um, so it's like, oh, it's it's my fault, <laughs> you know. Um mm-hmm. and that's that's often what a lot of people who go through trauma um have to do just to survive. It's like, oh, you have to blame yourself and be like it's not because, you know, um, you know, your caretaker was a shitty person, um, or not even that. Let's not even say it that way. It's not, it's not because your caretaker didn't know how to take care of you. Um, it's because you weren't worth being taken care of. Um, like that's easier to cope with as a child, um, than the reality of the world. And it's like, it's a twisted and hard, um, to untwist. (laughs) in your brain you know very much but there i feel like there's hope you know because like even a year ago i wouldn't have realized like i wouldn't have been so aware of how hard it's been the last three weeks because i only had one breakdown you know in the last month um i would just be like oh yeah i'm fine (laughs) whatever (laughs) i had a breakdown (laughs) whatever (laughs) like (laughs) this is fine this is fine um, and I wouldn't be so careful with myself that I've had to be super careful with myself. And also at the same time, like pushing myself to keep like, like, uh, my therapist calls it like exposure therapy. Um, but to keep doing the things that are scaring me, um, and push through it and be like, it's going to be okay. <laughs> it's going to be okay. Yeah. You're going to freak out, but then you're going to get past that. And then, you know, we're all going to be fine <laughs> afterwards. <laughs> and now you have You'll friends on your side. so and, bad. Yeah. Yeah. Like, now I have people who actually care. Um, so it's like, oh, it's okay. <laughs> and you can talk about it. And uh, and actually you talking about it is going to help other people. Um, everything that I, I've always said to myself, but then, like, quickly, like, shut it in a closet in my head and be like no that's all wrong it's that's not really true (laughs) you know it's like (laughs) um yeah like i mean you guys talked about self-worth on your podcast and instantly i was like oh (laughs) this explains so much of me (laughs) you know Mm -hmm. um i'm like i definitely want to talk with someone about this um actively and then i was like go ahead and reach out to Rosemary Teal and I wrote it down like because I have like a different server from the from for, for the podcast that I'm, <laughs> I'm the only one in there but like <laughs> I do like little things like little notes to myself and like like what the topic name is and the episode number I'm on and when I'm expected to be on um YouTube all that stuff just to keep track it's like a lot easier now That's um hard. yeah but I like I wrote down something like um so today I asked Rosemary Teal to like do an episode with me about self-worth and it's okay if she says no for whatever reason. It's going to be okay. We're still going to do it. It's going to be really good, but her podcast was awesome about it or something like it was just like reading <laughs> through it so that if for whatever reason you couldn't do it, um, 
or like you didn't even have a chance to see my message because like your life is so crazy that I wouldn't like be harsh and mean to myself. <laughs> <laughs> like she might not even see this for two weeks who knows just like go ahead and just go for it and plan for this and this is going to happen on this day with her without her and it's going to be all right it was, it was funny i was like yeah because <laughs> i know you like you know you have a lot of stuff to to deal with and i didn't want i didn't want my brain to sabotage that <laughs> and just assume <Yeah. laughs> that you don't care i'm like i know she cares um so I was super excited. We we're like, I still want to do this. I was like, ah. <laughs> I like, I got super excited. It's just really nice to talk to somebody that like really understands mm -hmm. what it is that we're talking about. Like gets where I'm coming from and like has been there and is there and like understands. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's, I feel like I'm not explaining myself right or something because it's it's hard to to verbalize what it feels like. Yeah. It sounds I don't know. Sometimes I feel like I'm complaining and I just sound like somebody that's complaining nonstop. <laughs> and then I'm like, I'm being annoying. I'm just gonna shut up because nobody wants to hear this and nobody wants to hear how bad I, I hate myself because I just sound negative and annoying and obnoxious. <laughs> that's exactly <laughs> but that's the how whole I feel. that's the whole thing. <laughs> That's the what this that's what the self worth issue does to you is like yeah. it makes you be that way and yeah. like it's so hard to control it. I think therapy has absolutely helped though because when I'm doing it, I'm more able to recognize that I'm doing it, and then I'm like, oh, that's what this is. This that's what this is from. It doesn't yeah. necessarily stop me from doing it, but at least I know why. Yeah. yeah it's why? Like, oh, I recognize and, like, you, you little troll. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Cut it out. <laughs> that's why I love. I called it. that part of my brain Lizzie because it's my lizard brain. You're like, mm -hmm, excuse me. I know who you are. <laughs> Go away. <laughs> That's good. Control yourself. Get out of here, Lizzie. <laughs> That's so funny. So funny. It started off at a, I as a name joke, my part. and then it just it ended up working as a way to help me heal myself. It's hilarious. Um, because I was like, oh yeah, it's you know my lizard brain, and you know Sad Bunny helps me battle her, and I made up this this huge story, um, like narrative or whatever, um in my head about it all and then it, it actually does help me like when I'm like when I know I'm being completely vicious with myself and I want to stream but I'm like this could go this could go very bad <laughs> I just put on a head like a, a little pair of bunny ears and um then I pretend I'm making fun of myself but I'm not at the same time because who yeah. could be mean to a bunny Ever. No one. <laughs> Unless you're evil. <laughs> I mean, those are the things you got to find, like, what works for you. Like, yeah. whatever works. <laughs> yeah. It's it's funny. Um, but yeah. I like I like my little, um, I can't even remember the word for it right now. But, um, but yeah. I actually half stole the idea from Steve because he has, like, he used to have like a little unicorn self that he brought up and um like all this like this you know um story about how he came to be and all this stuff and I was like that sounds fun and I, I was like joking to myself like oh that's like this and this and you know whatever and then I realized it worked for me it helped me you know I was like oh this is a way I can cope with this um this part of myself that's so harsh and evil. Um, be like, oh, listen. <laughs> Calm down. But yeah, like, I get what you're saying where it's, like, hard to articulate it all. Um, yeah. And sometimes during the podcast, I'll be, like, thinking, like, I'm just sitting here whining for an hour. <laughs> and then right. someone will be like... Exactly. Thank you so much for talking about this because it's helping me understand myself. And I'm like, oh, God, validation. That's weird. Right. <laughs> that's that's what I feel like. Sometimes I feel like I'm just like incessantly whining and I'm like, 
shut up. (laughs) But that's just because I have that like negative self-talk and that bad self-worth because, you know, like you said, like you'll get validation from other people and then they're like, no, I appreciate it. That makes me feel less crazy that I'm not the only person out there that feels this way. Yeah. And it's nice to have somebody be able to verbalize it. And yeah. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like, um, I felt like when I met you, it was like I finally had like a, a nice clean mirror to look into. And I was like, <laughs> oh, that's the real me that I'm seeing there. Not this thing over here that I'm so mean <laughs> to. You know? It's like... <laughs> What? <laughs> it's like I had a funhouse mirror that like made me look like an evil troll. And I was like, oh yeah, savvy or horrible person. And then I would see you like struggling and like say awful things about yourself or f- have awful feelings about yourself. And I would be like, no, never, don't ever say that. Why are you saying all these <laughs> things about your music and you're awesome? And then other people would describe you and I'd be like, wait, this is what people have said about me before. What? What is going on? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the that's why, like, on my stream, like, I have the little bad pup command every time I say something negative about myself. Because it's kind of like your, like, my version of your bunny ears. It's like my, like, community calling me out and being like, stop it. Like, stop being a doofus. Like, you're fine. Like, yeah. stop talking negatively about yourself. <laughs> yeah. It's like, it's just like a way to, like, call me out and snap me out of it when I'm being super negative. And, yeah. like make me more aware <laughs> like sometimes I really don't realize it until somebody uses that command and I'm like wait did I say something negative I didn't even realize it <laughs> yeah yeah exactly it's like like when I when I put on my little bunny ears and I'm like messing up like say I like put the capo on the wrong fret and I like start playing and then it sounds awful I'll like my gut will be like god you're such an idiot like what the fuck like who would ever be here? Why are you even doing this? Did it and like I stop it all and be like, oh man, bunnies don't even know how to do this. What is this? <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> Savvy will see that later. You know, like and I just instantly like deflect all of that mess and be like, yeah. these are lies. This is stupid. <laughs> like don't don't think that way. And it's it's such a weird thing. And I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> weird bunny ears works. Okay. <laughs> guess I'm a furry. Not, I'm not, but okay. <laughs> oh my god. That's so funny. Uh, but yeah, it's, um, it was really, it was really good to, to like, um, like when I was sitting there, like listening to the podcast, I was like, I wish I would have been in this stream. I would have been like <laughs> spamming in the chat and being like, oh, well. I was like, let me cover this. <laughs> Let me talk about it. Uh, I mean, they're good topics. Like, because, I mean, I could talk about this forever. Like, it's yeah. just, it's so complicated and so simple at the same time. Like, mm-hmm. it's just, it's such a hard thing to break out of when you are in that mindset. It's so hard to, like, cure yourself, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's like you said, I'm like, I'm more and more glad that I'm aware that it's happening. Um, and like you said, I can't stop it, but I'm just like, okay, this is where my brain is right now. All right. All right. <laughs> it's like, okay, mm-hmm. I'm just going to take it easy. Don't do anything new. <laughs> <laughs> Remember that project you were planning to start? Don't. <laughs> It's like, just wait a minute. <laughs> hey, Color Theory, welcome. Welcome to the Savvy Lou Sound stream. I'm here with my friend, Rosemary Teal, my sister friend. Hello. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, like, this whole month has been like that. It's been, like, Lizzie running rampant. <laughs> and I've been like, all right, we're, this is fine. <laughs> like, we're, yeah. We're in chaos. I think that's the other thing. Like, if you've been to, like, me or Brandon's stream lately, like, literally all the time we're like, this is fine. This is fine. <laughs> yeah, This is fine. Because we just know that everything is, like, hot mess. And we're just like, 
this is fine. Move on. <laughs> Fine. Like, it's just our way of, like, coping with the constant barrage of life mm -hmm. and all of the craziness <laughs> that happens. And it's like, okay, this is fine. Just move on. <laughs> <laughs> I love that emote because I'm just like, yeah, this this encapsulates, like, when I'm having anxiety. It's just like, yep. <laughs> Because internally, yeah. <laughs> it's like the flames are going, and then I'm just like, yeah, eh, whatever. Like, anyone else that would see me that I wouldn't open up to would just be like, oh, yeah, cool. Hey, how's it going? I'd be like, mm, mm, hi. <laughs> you know? And inside, I'm like, ah! <laughs> you know, like, yeah. <laughs> All the sirens are going on. How off. are you doing? Well, everything is a freaking nightmare, but great. This is fine. This is fine. <laughs> Everything's good. We're good. And it's it's so hard when I, like, because, like, one of my friends, like, went through something really, really tragic um, a couple weeks ago. And, like, usually she's, like, the person I go to to, like, be around and just have, like, really happy vibes and stuff. And, um... She's still so much that right now, but, like, I wanted to reach out to her when I was, like, in a super bad place because I saw she was online, but I didn't because I was, like, this stupid thing you're going through is nothing like what she just went through. And if she knew that, she would feel horrible that I was just, like, don't do it. <laughs> but I was just, like, no, no. Her, her troubles are worse, and we're just going to sit here in the burning building. Uh, she could rescue me, but nah. It's fine. <laughs> it's like, we'll just I wait. I think <laughs> it's nice when you can have a friendship where, like, no matter what's going on, it's like a back and forth. Mm -hmm. Like, I always try to make sure that, like, if somebody checks in on me, that I'm also checking in on them because, like, whatever you're going through, somebody else is going through something too. And like, sometimes even if you're going through something like super crazy and chaotic, I, I mean, I guess it depends on the person, but it might be helpful to like, stop thinking about your problem for a minute and help somebody else with theirs. Yeah. So yeah. I don't know. <laughs> that helps me so much. <laughs> like so so much that's why i'm always like selfishly like hey how are you doing tell me about your problems so i can forget about myself like every time i'm streaming i'm like yeah tell right. me if you're in a bad place come here <laughs> like, <laughs> how are you doing today like it's not like i don't want to talk about what i'm dealing with like i'll i'll bring it up if it's like if i think it'll be helpful to them but I'm just, like, I want to stop, talk, like, thinking about me and, like, all my chaos. So let me go help someone, you know. Um, even if it's something, like, you know, that most people would think is small, you know. Like, I think um, yesterday, uh, like, last night, Gels was telling me that, like, <laughs> she was trying to get Chipotle and she was there for, like, an hour after, like, she was supposed to, like, have gotten her food and they lost her food and had to redo it. And she was like, uh, you know, and I was like, I would be hangry in that situation, you know, and, like, I, I couldn't at the time, like, dig into the conversation too much, but just, like, her, like, venting all of that, I, like, it made me feel better about the times, like, one, the times I've been in that situation and feel absolutely ballistic about something that most people would probably be like it's it's fine it's just whatever this will pass you know <laughs> it's like it's not like you know your house caved in it's it's you didn't get your dinner you know <laughs> but it's like when in the moment like i'm like the most ferocious beast ever if you mess with my food and i'm like i was <laughs> just venting to someone else about like the stupid doordash person that basically Yo. stole my food i was like i'm so ballistic. angry at doordash right now don't get me started <laughs> <laughs> and at the time when i was like ranting about it i was like this is so stupid like i have so many other things that are worse going through my life but i just want to rant about this but like it yeah. just made me feel better 
about one about the other day that I was upset about the stupid DoorDash guy, but also <laughs> like I was I I wasn't in a particularly great place last night, and I was just like, oh, here's something to forget about myself, and I'm just gonna be like, I'm just gonna listen to my friend, and enjoy that I have a friend that talks to me. <laughs> So I was like, this is nice. <laughs> this is good. I need this. So um so yeah, it's it's nice to that back and forth is always nice. Um Yeah. To have. And be like, how are you doing? How's it going? <laughs> Give and take. <laughs> but what happened with your DoorDash? Now I wanna know. <laughs> um so I'm not going to say exactly what I ordered, but I ordered something from this place Mm -hmm. and they didn't include the most important part of the order oh my god which may have been an adult beverage and i was really upset about it (laughs) and i'm like what the hell you bring me everything except for the most important part of my meal oh my god because i really needed that today (laughs) and i was really upset oh no that would make me so upset I would have been so pissed off. And it was just very <laughs> upsetting because I ordered a couple of these adult beverages and Brandon was like, did you just order one? And I was like, no, I ordered six. <laughs> <laughs> and they included one that me and Brandon had to split. Yes, it oh. may or may have not been beer. <laughs> you can talk about beer, beer in here. So I don't long. care. And I was like, ooh. <laughs> I was like, I want a beer. Oh, my God. <laughs> and it was just really disappointing. And I was really upset. And I'm like, I got so upset, I deleted the DoorDash app. And I was like, I'm done with DoorDash. I'm not doing it anymore. <laughs> oh, my God. That's horrible. <laughs> that would have, so that would have made me super upset as well. Like, and uh, so I don't even remember Especially what Especially on the was. nights where you're just like, I just need... An adult beverage tonight, please. (laughs) Well, for me, it was like I had ordered like I had been craving um like the the checkers fries, like French fries, and a milkshake. Um, and we hadn't had dinner, but like I was out driving with mom because like we both just wanted to leave the house and go out, and then like we had to come back to like get the bunny her meds, and I was too tired. To go out and, like, find food again. And I hadn't been able to do, like, groceries yet. So I was like, I'll just order something. I'll order it. I'll order it, you know, from, um, from Checkers. They always use DoorDash. Um, I was like, it will be fine. Because last time I did it, it it came, like, really quickly and it was nice. It was fine. Blah, blah, blah. It'll be okay. And I order it. And then the guy... (laughs) He, like, he stops, like, because, you know, you can see it on the map or whatever. He stops near the the entrance of the the, um, apartment complex. And then, like, then the car, like, spins around a little bit and it looks like he's leaving. And then I'm like, what? And uh, then he calls me. And I'm like, uh. (laughs) And um, he's like, I, I, you know, I was like, hello? And he's like, I'm outside. (laughs) I'm like, he didn't say, hey, this is your DoorDash driver. I'm here with your meal. I can't find you. He just said, I'm outside. And I was like, um, okay. outside where? <laughs> and he's like, I, I don't know. What's your address? <laughs> and I'm like, don't they freaking give you the address to get here? And like, what? what oh my goodness. and i'm like uh i don't know where you're at to help you find me he's like i'm in the middle <laughs> and i was like in the middle of what <laughs> oh my god <laughs> and he was like it'll be easier if you come to me and i was like what i don't know no, where you dude. are oh like Do your at that point i just hung up i was just like no, I was starving. I didn't feel good. I knew I was going to get upset, which would just make me, like, have a breakdown. And, uh, the middle of what? Like, the middle? The middle. Like, what What the hell? 
<laughs> so you want me to just walk around my whole apartment complex, which one isn't safe. Two, it was the middle of the night. Um, three, my back was hurting, which was why I didn't drive out to get it myself. And I was tired and hungry. I'm like, I'm not going to walk around my neighborhood looking for some random guy and like start knocking on windows of cars that have people in them. Like what? What oh, the so hell? weird. <laughs> <laughs> and then, <laughs> then he um like he starts blowing up my phone and so i was just like i just called the like the restaurant i was like listen the guy refuses to bring it to me i don't know where he's at and then you know we never saw him again <laughs> oh my god <laughs> and i was like eh. they were like we'll refund you and i was like oh my god wow Thanks. They still haven't cool. refunded me, which means I have to fight with with that on. Like I have to call my bank, and I haven't I haven't had time or energy to do that. But I'm gonna I'm gonna do it eventually. Be like, listen, <laughs> they they promised this. Like Pizza Hut did something similar, um, which was super annoying, like a couple weeks ago, and they promised to refund me and never did. And then like I risked it and got them again and then like they did what you did you know like or your situation where they forgot the most important thing like the only reason i ordered the freaking pizza was like i think it was like for a drink or something um because i was like i didn't have a chance to do groceries yet and i i knew i wouldn't have time or energy to do it in the next day so i was like well if we get a pizza we'll at least have this two liter and I don't yeah, have to, like, make we, tea we're... or make juice or, you know, like, I don't have to make anything when I, it's dinner time tomorrow and we'll just have it there. And then it can wait until, like, you know, I can do groceries and stuff. Um, yeah, because it would have been so much cheaper if we had gone and gotten groceries. But I was like, I'm exhausted. I don't feel good. I don't want to go out. Mm -hmm. That's the whole reason I'm using DoorDash, and then it just gets jacked up, and it's super expensive, and I'm like, this is not worth it. Yeah, exactly. It was like thirty dollars for freaking. So checkers. annoyed, and I was like, oh. yeah. I was like, I should just freaking drove there. I should just freaking drove there. <laughs> I was like, man, the hell. <laughs> but I didn't want to. My back was hurting, and I didn't feel good, and no. Just like ah. <laughs> it's too much. We had a friend order some mixed drinks one time, and they were sitting across the street, but then just drove off without dropping them off. <laughs> the <heck? laughs> I remember then, that. Then another time, I ordered, and the driver called me up and was pissed at me because the order wasn't at the restaurant. How is that my fault? <laughs> Oh I god. remember that. He was like screaming at Brandon. Oh my god. And he, Brandon was like, I'm sorry. <laughs> like I, I don't I don't really know what to say. And then he's like, You're gonna need to call and have your order refunded or whatever. Oh my goodness. Oh my god, that's horrible. Ugh. Like um I used to get um Walmart delivery um for groceries. And I was paying mm -hmm. like the twelve whatever it was like twelve eighty eight a month or something like that, so that it would be like no minimum order or anything like that. And um, like as soon as the pandemic started, the driver started disappearing with the whole grocery order. Like they would show up on the map like across town, like twenty miles south of me or something. <laughs> What? I'd be like, uh, maybe the GPS is broken. What? And I would try to call them, and they would be like, "Oh, where, where are you? I don't know. Like, I can't find you." And I'm like, "Uh," I'd tell them where I am. What's your address? I'm like, "It's in the app. It's the address in the app." And I would send it to them, and then like, they'd never answer again, and then the groceries were gone. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> I hope you got your money back. Oh, I did accidentally turn down my audio. Oh, thank you. I have no idea how I did that. <laughs> <laughs> well? Oh god. But yeah, it was just like, um... We missed your story! 
<laughs> what part? Wait, which part did you hear? Oh, no. About the groceries? Maybe? Maybe. Okay. So, like, I used to order groceries from Walmart, and they started, they used DoorDash to deliver them. And as soon as the pandemic started, they the drivers would just disappear. They would go, like, across town and like it would show them on the map like 20 miles south or north of me or like all really far away and i would try to call them and they would be like where are you what's your address and i would send them my address and like it should be in the app right like that's how you find me (laughs) kind of thing um and then they would just disappear with my food (laughs) that's horrible so I stopped paying for the Walmart grocery, but it was literally the easiest thing for me because, like, I can get my bunny's hay there. It's the only hay she likes. Um, and I could get everything else, you know, like every every single thing that I needed, I could get from there. Um, milk and, you know, eggs or whatever. Um, I don't buy eggs, but you know what I mean. Like, <laughs> normal groceries and then the, the bunny's groceries, I could all get in the same place at the same time and it was like oh this is so great and they would bring it to me so i didn't have to leave my house and be all tired and it was only 12 dollars a month or 13 you know so um yeah that was frustrating because the doordash guys just started disappearing <laughs> it's insane <laughs> <laughs> unbelievable i put in an order i can't at, believe that. for doordash at like 10 p.m and the guy delivered it at 6 a.m the next day <laughs> but i could see on the receipt they picked it up at the right time oh my god (laughs) what no no way oh no i don't know if i would eat that i would not eat that either (laughs) or or i wouldn't touch it they do leave it in their car (laughs) it is not okay gross what i loved is that they would be like almost to the next town over and they would mark arrived and i'm like nope what do you mean not quite (laughs) i don't live over there what do you mean i still have nothing hello (laughs) unbelievable probably probably they were like oh (laughs) i should probably drop this off (laughs) Yeah, it went it went in the trash and I put in that I wanted a refund and George DoorDash said no because it was delivered and the order was accurate. Wow. Wow. That sucks. That's ridiculous. Yeah, that's messed up. <laughs> it was delivered and the order was accurate. That's when you say like they forgot my ranch, I want a refund. <laughs> <laughs> uh, give me my money back uh, that's funny because Jells always tells me she has the least um, hardest time with DoorDashes getting her money back um, I was like oh really lucky you <laughs> <laughs> Checker still has my $30 for the food I never got <laughs> Oh my gosh. <sighs> so does Pizza Hut for the food I never got. <laughs> I should, like, I'm just going to call my bank and be like, listen, these people here and this one over here, they never, I just, can I just have my money back? Because they'll do it. My bank is awesome like that. Yeah. I like, know they improved quite it, a like, bit. I this mean... was years ago. Oh, man. This was like a week ago that I dealt with this. <laughs> this yeah. Mine was today. <laughs> today? <laughs> Oh my god. The day. Wow. I was like, is this for real right now? <laughs> really? Yeah, like um Postmates used to be really good and when they got taken over by Uber Eats, garbage. Garbage. And I'm like, oh great. Great. And then I've never used Postmates. I was debating, but I'm it like It doesn't exist now. It's uh Uber Eats now. They got oh. They got taken over. Oh, they changed it? Yeah. They like they got bought out. I guess Postmates wasn't making it. Um I used to love Bite Squad. They they used to have the most accurate like little GPS thing. Um 
and yeah like they had uniforms even so i loved that because i was like i don't i'm not opening the door for a random man (laughs) or woman you know it's like oh i see you have the little green shirt and the little green hat on i like it (laughs) um but then they screwed me over once and i was like never again never again this is where this (laughs) and the one restaurant that i really liked um with them that was the only reason i really used them um closed down so i was like ah screw it (laughs) (laughs) i always confuse postmates with post post secret what is post secret post secret i don't know what that is either wait let's see for for work i used to install fiber internet and doordash had a couple offices that I installed at, and their new thing was they are making the food at their own spot, not even going to the restaurant for some of it. What? What? Gross. Oh, no. Yeah, I deleted the app, and that just that just drove home the idea that I will <laughs> no longer use it. You know. Gross. Yeah, that's not... No, thank you. I don't want to trust they they don't have the the like health services stuff or whatever. Right. Oh. Post oh, I secret remember was a that. blog where people would send anonymous secrets via postcards. I want to do that. <laughs> I want to I want to send out random secrets. <laughs> you like Nightbot? I have a crush on you, Nightbot. <laughs> Just write it down a little card. <laughs> well, they have a DoorDash Mart listed as well. Oh, is that what that is? Ooh. Ew. <laughs> DoorDash Kitchens. Ew. I don't know. Oh, I can't. I'm not on board. I feel uncomfortable. I'll just go get groceries. <laughs> That's so weird. That's so... That's creepy. I feel like I feel like I should move to my closing screen and be like, "Bye, YouTube." <laughs> like, <laughs> he's like, "Let's Bye. just talk about DoorDash." <laughs> yeah, no, we just we totally we switched on. topics to DoorDash. <laughs> I don't mind. I don't mind at all. Um, but it's gonna do the 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 cool intro. By the way, you guys. Um, while I, right before I transition to my closing screen, the, the girl talking to me and the person here in the chat, these are the people who made my amazing intro for Monday Mingle. <laughs> so definitely, you know, go to their website. It's, uh, the third one listed on there. If you need anything, emotes, videos, um, I forget, photography, music, you know they got they got the talent they got the digs so i don't know if that's the right way to say that but it just sounded cool in my head (laughs) but yeah hit them up and you know they make their own emotes for their channel um eight-year-old mcdonald's eight-hour-old mcdonald's ew (laughs) powered by the leftovers found in driver's cars no messed up you're living the closing screen real fast bye youtube